Well, put them on. Just throw them on there. there we go. Done. Done. Yeah, I'm sure that'll work good. Well, I've been changing tires out here. <clears throat> I hadn't videoed much of it because we're also in the shop, which we're trying to run. The CNC machinery has been running all day and it's loud, so I can't video while it's running. We've been cutting parts out, stacking them up. They're hidden in every corner. Um, yeah, the shop's a mess. Um, <clears throat> anyway, back to the subject at hand. Uh, finally wrapping up the day here, and I'm going to change my pusher tire out on the Tourist. I've already done the tires on the Patrol, but I thought I'd take a moment and kind of show you what I've got set up here. Uh, the tools, how, how I'm doing it, it's not really bad. Uh, we'll also be removing the final drive off the Tourist and greasing the splines. It's a one-wheel drive, so it'll be easier to do than when we did the Patrol. Brake pads look okay. Everything was nice and clean. Uh, wasn't too bad to get off it. Like with these Russian bikes, everything's a little odd and awkward, and I, I really don't believe any two are identical either. But I uh, had a little bit of uh, trouble getting the axle out, had to get some leverage on that, but it, once it broke free, it came right on off. And uh, so I thought I'd set up here. We've got the pusher tire off, and I've already pulled the valve stem, deflated the tube, and that's where I'm at. I'm going to peel the tire off of this thing now and pull the tube out and finish getting it off. And just thought I'd show you that process. All right, first thing I'll tell you is the Russian tools they provide are about uh, the same quality as the Russian bike, but, but you gotta love Euro. It's a love-hate relationship. Uh, the little uh, retainer ring wrenches that they give you. I've kicked them around here and see this. At, at, out of six tires, this is actually number seven because I had to do the spare on the patrol. Um, these little pins lock in to this retaining nut so you can unscrew it and get the bearings out because I'm going through and checking all the bearings and re-greasing and you can see what happens. This one, it, it popped out. I don't know where it's at. I, just, I lost it. But it's, it's like they're just pressure fitted in, riveted. They're not welded or anything. I, I don't know how they're done, but they pop right out. This one popped out. I put some JB weld in it and... Uh, let that cure overnight, see how it does. And if it gives me any trouble, I'll break the welder out uh, or make one or I'll do something. Okay, first thing you do is break the bead. Have a, a bead breaker and it's not hard to use. Uh, it confuses some people. It doesn't come with instructions, but essentially you break the, the bead. Generally the bottom bead will break first. Not always. And I put the longer part on the top. Goes, yep, the bottom one just broke. Now, here's where people get confused. They think they should go ahead and break the top bead, and you can't really do that. What you got to do now that the bottom bead is broke, and the top bead is not. If you try to use this bead breaker again, you're just squeezing this tire up. So, what you do is you go ahead and you demount this side of the tire, then you use the bead breaker again and pop the rest of the bead off. I'm using uh, my snot lube, I call it. It's got the consistency of snot. Seems to be pretty good stuff. It, it dries well. I just run this all the way around it. To make it a little easier to do here. Now I did spring for a tree. I've been doing, I did half of these with the spoons. And um, that's work. I, I use three spoons and you just work your way around two, three, four inches at the time and just keep working the spoons until you pop this thing off. So I ordered this. My table is not quite set up for it. Um, so I came up with uh, this to use as a center bar. I do have a, a pocket under here in the table to allow for the center bar to engage it. Okay, I got the Nomar bar here and I found if you push down on the back to give it a little gap, 
feed this bar in. It's a little bit of a trick to grab it, but it will grab it. Popped off there. There we go. There we go. Now it's coming around. And then once you have it, you can turn it around. And then this is the part, because of the way this is set up, it's not anchored. I don't have a way to really lash the wheel down. This just takes brute force. And I found if I grab this and pull, I can do it. That is much better than the spoons. Uh, it does take a good bit of strength to do that, but it is much better than using those spoons. So, I give that tool a thumbs up. Now what I'll do as I continue to modify my table and everything is I'll make a way to anchor it down. I'll make it easier to use that tool at some point. But uh, Right now I just get the tube out. I like the tire tamer. That's a very useful tool to have. Just gives you a little leverage you can really pull on it. I notice on these tourist tires they're wet on the inside. Uh, this is not the lube that I put in. This is actually something and I'm not sure what it is. It's not water. It's like oil. Um, I don't know I guess it could just be rust prevention. Uh, one of them I did find a little bit of water inside mixed with it. Um, but whatever it is, it's, it's smeared all over. And I really don't like to see that because you can get a situation where you get the tire to spin on the rim. And that's not good because it'll shear the valve stem right off the tube. What I like to do is clean them up and make them dry, and then I'll take and put grease on the spoke nipples up underneath, and then put the band over it to protect it. Now we got the tube out, we just got the tire here. We had to repeat with the Nomar tool. Just forgot, we do want to break that bottom bit. Well, it broke for us, so no big deal. The Nomar tool will pressure on it. If that underlying bead had not broke, you can take the bead breaker and pop it right free. But it broke for us uh, while we were using this tool. So no big deal. Now we'll pull this over. Try to pull this up so it's in the center of the tire, not on the rim there. Get the tool right underneath it. Pull it back up. There we go. Same thing, you notice I'm turning it 90 degrees, that's because this tip is flat in one direction. It's kind of like a hammerhead shark. And when you're about to pull the bead off, you want to turn it so that the long part is this way. And the handle on here gives you an index to do that, and it gives you a place to grab to pull. But now, I didn't lube this this time, I should have. Oh yeah, definitely much harder without the lube on it. But still doable. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely put the lube on it. That helps. And the tire's off. Now, out of six tires, I needed a spare. I bought six new ones. I pulled one of the good ones off the tourist to make a spare for the patrol. And this pusher actually, it's a Duro, which is an inexpensive tire. But it's still in good shape, so this is one I'm going to put to the side and keep. The rest of them will go to recycling. There's almost no tread left on them at all. Now I'm going to take the wheel, put it on the balancer stand. I'll clean it. I'll check it for uh, trueness. Make sure it's less than a tenth of an inch side to side wobble, which on a steel rim is a bit of a challenge. Uh, but basically I'll clean it up, uh, grease the uh, nipples, put the, then bring it back and put the band back on it and, and get it ready to mount the new tire. We have greased the 
spoke nipples. We have torqued everything to the minimum torque. We have checked the trueness. We did remove the old weights that were on it. There were only a few that had already thrown the other ones. That's why it was vibrating so bad. And now we're ready for a new tire. Now I got the uh, K28s here. They are directional, so I have to pay attention when I'm putting them on there. It goes on the back this way, which means the direction arrow should be going that way when it goes on. Find the directional arrow here. There's the directional arrow. Right now it's going this way, which is the wrong way. So I want it to go on like that. That's the way it's going to roll. So I almost forgot. I, need, I do need to put a rim strip on here. And what I've been doing is doubling up on the rim strips. I've got the old ones, which weren't all that good. But put them down just to help improve the padding between the two and the nuts along here. And then I have 18 slash 19 inch rim strips. 18, but there are 18 slash 9s. They're get it twisted in our way. And I like those because they're nice and snug. Snap on here with a good strong rubber band. The ones that are a little larger don't have a lot of tension behind them and they tend to move around when you're trying to put the tire on. Make sure it's centered up good. There we go. No grease or anything rubbed off onto the rim. And here, double check. Last thing I want to do is put this sucker on and then find out I gotta take it off. Sounds like something my son would do. Right? Nah. Alright, we put the tire snot on. I like to triple check to make sure I'm putting it on the wrong way. One more time, it rotates this way. And there's my arrow going in the right way. So we're good. Now push this on best I can there. You gotta make sure you don't catch this under the rim as well. I've done that before and tried to figure out why is this thing so hard to put on? I found out that it was because Now the little bead buddies are not entirely necessary but they are helpful. Um, I just put one on here. I didn't even bother locking it over the spoke. And I've had pretty good luck with that so far. Once the pressure gets on it, it doesn't go anywhere. And this Baja no pinch tool, it is pretty neat. It's already bound up the little holder here. use talcum powder and 
Yeah, you can like it or not. I don't know. I think this is medicated too, so it will prevent athlete's tire. But the reason I like the talcum powder is it lets the to move against the tire when you're putting it in and it doesn't catch now this is the part that for me is always a little awkward and ugly putting the tube in because it's just I don't know, I'm, I guess I'm just not good at putting screws in tires. I've yet to pinch one or have any problem with that. Um, not for a long, long time. First time I pinched a tube was when I was a kid. I forget what I was doing, but I do remember doing it. I'm going to say I've rather wrestle with motorcycle tires than just about any other tire out there. Tractor tires, <laughs> those are my least favorite. We're going to dairy for several, a couple of years. It was near here when I was growing up. And uh, you've got to watch out for that. You can't let the tube fold. And this is the part I don't like. Now you got to get the valve stem through. And I know they make little holders, lines you can screw onto the end, pull through. I've always had very luck with those. They end up breaking or pulling off. Or... So I just push it through. And then put the nut on to keep it in place. And one thing I don't like to see are valve stems coming out of motorcycle tires at a huge angle. I know they'll move around a little bit. A little bit of an angle is okay, but I've seen them poke it out practically sideways. Um, And generally, if you just take a little time now, like if I move this tube back and forth, this valve stem is going to move back and forth. By adding the talcum powder, when I start moving this around and working with it, it's less likely to grab and drag the tube with it, causing the valve stem to be in an angle. Now, one of them I took off the patrol. The valve stem was turned all the way sideways almost up against the spoke that it was next to. It was turned so far and that's just something that I like to avoid. It just doesn't look nice. I mean you're gonna go to a lot of trouble to do this. You might as well take your time and make it look nice. All I do is tighten this up enough that I know that it's not going to let it fall back in any. Now, the trick is just to work this tube in. And what I'm doing is this part, I'm trying to stretch through and get it onto the rim strip that I've got inside because that's the part that should be touching it when it inflates and these are heavy duty thick tubes as well I went ahead and opted to get the thicker ones since these bikes don't run at high speed anyway I don't think it's going to be an issue these are not um, you know, thin high-speed tires either. These are more like dirt tires in a way. I mean, these aren't for dirt. They are for the road. The K28s are, but let's see. I 
trying to check as I put them in. I got one right on the bead now, and I don't want that. And part of the problem with that is that when you lift this to get your hand in there, these are so narrow that the bottom of the tire is coming up and lifting the tube up. So when I put the tire down and let it settle, the tube should drop away because you don't want to end up pinching the tube between the rim and the tire when we start putting it on. So now I try to come back and check it in a few places and make sure it's not sitting on the rim with it just laying there. And with the tire tamer, what I'm doing is I'm actually pushing down here and twisting this up so I'm not lifting the bottom of the tire. And I can just get my hand in and feel. See the tubes right there, so it's clear. And generally I'm a little faster about this, but I'm taking my time to kind of let you guys see what I'm doing. Oh yeah, I think we're good there. All right. Plus I'm slower because my back's just tired today. We've done, I did the sidecar tire, plus just working in general. And uh, we did the final drive, pulled it off and went through it. Now I just lift this, stick it under there and let the snot go. Tire and rim. It doesn't really take much of this. Just want a little bit. There we go. Put everything in place. Now we get the snow pinch tool again. Now with the Duro tire that I put on, I don't have to use the no pinch tool to get it started, but these I found out that I really kind of do. Um, they have very thick sidewalls on them. And even getting them started is a bit of a challenge. So that takes care of that. Then what I want to do is make sure that I lift this bottom over here, this bottom bead. I want to make sure it lifts up and kind of gets into the center well where the strip is the best that I can. And then I just want to take this easy and three or four inch bites is what I found works the best. And it'll generally, you can hear it pop right over the rim as you go around. And I tried taking larger bites. I tried just coming over here and pushing on it. I found that really requires a lot more pressure than you should be putting on. And you can damage the tire with this. But if you just take small bites, um, it seems to do pretty good. Now, right about now I like to stop and swing around over to here next to the rim keeper here and give this one a couple of pushes like that make sure this is down make sure the bottom yep bottom feels good then we go back to what we were doing Now, I like to do what I just did over here with the bead buddy because I found on one of the other tires, remember this is the sixth one of these I've done. Unlike the second one that I did, I found that this had popped up and you see how this is stretching here. This uh, lower bead was engaged down on the rim a little too far and I didn't realize as I was putting pressure it was cutting it right along here. Now I caught it before it cut it but I noticed that it was stressing against this bead buddy. So that's why I kind of do that. It lets me gauge. I know if this pops back up that something's wrong, I need to stop and back up and I don't just keep pushing on it and damage the tire against the bead buddy. And 
this is the part where it gets a little more difficult. And you just have to take small bites. Make sure this lifts off. There we go. There we go. Yeah, you saw that give suddenly. That's where I lifted this on the bottom and let it ride into that well. Now we got it. There we go. Now it's on there. And with the Duro tire, I found that I had a little bit of ability to get in here and see and feel. With the K28s, I don't. It's, it's pretty much, because of the way the tire is designed and the thickness of the sidewalls, it's pretty much locked in place. But what I do try to do is to come down here and look for the tube. And one thing I discovered about the heavy-duty tubes that I like is they are a little bit stiffer. They don't seem to get as easily caught between the bead and the rim. And anything that'll help improve that is, is a good thing. So it's ready for air now. Stick very well to the machine, and really good. 